Hey y'all, this video will be about my book, God is a Good Father. I wrote it two years ago. Check out God is a Good Father by Lisa Bedrick on Amazon. Um, the topic of fatherhood is always a sensitive subject because I feel like most people didn't really have the best father. Most people, at least for sure, didn't have a 100% good father. And everybody feels some anger and some shame over that. For example, my dad <clears throat> went to jail when I was six for attempting to rape me. So obviously I've always felt some shame over that. Um, recently he was in prison for 10 years for being a child molester. Um, and then my stepdad, <laughs> he was kind of a big fail too. My mom met my stepdad when I was 18 at church. They met in a boundaries and dating group, ironically. My mom pursued him, which, ladies, don't do that. Don't pursue a guy. If they're not pursuing you, there's probably a reason. Anyway, she asked him out for coffee, so they went out for coffee. And then he told her straight up at the beginning that his ex-wife had accused him of molesting their son, Michael. That, And I asked Michael, my stepbrother, about this years later. I said, what did your mom say that you said when you were a kid? And he said... I guess when I was three years old, I told my mom that daddy stuck a stick up my butt. And I was like, well, do you remember it? And he was like, no. Anyway, so that, that made my second family pretty awkward because me and my mom and my stepbrother all the whole time were wondering if that happened, you know. And yeah, if it happened once or multiple times or if it was just a made up lie. But anyways, my stepdad kept saying that. His ex made all that up just to have a reason to divorce him because she was Catholic and Catholics don't believe in divorce. I don't know. Anyway, so I never knew if I could trust him, but I tried to for 17 years and then I let him babysit my daughters and I'm pretty sure he was messing with, like sexually molesting my oldest daughter when she was five. I don't know exactly what happened, but... Anyways, back on the topic of God is a good father. <laughs> God is not like our earthly fathers. And this is something that I struggled with actually most of my life was I thought that since God let me get sexually molested by my, by my father, that he didn't care about my purity. You know, I always struggled with that. I was like, why didn't God stop it? Why did God let that happen? Although you could say God stopped it because it was just attempted rape but not actually rape. But still, I was like, why did God even let that much happen? Does he not care about my purity? You know, does God not care that I, that my innocence was ruined? So I always wrestled with that. But then recently, I guess in a time of prayer, I felt like God told me that he's not everywhere He's not everywhere. Like, we have that idea in Christian churches that God is omniscient, that he's everywhere at the same time. The reason we get that idea is from that psalm where David says, Where can I go from your spirit? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I go to the depths of the sea, even there you are. So that's where we get the idea. But was that accurate theology? I don't know. Anyways, either way, maybe God isn't everywhere, or God doesn't control everybody because we have free will, which I've heard this explained several times, and maybe this will help you with your own father, that God didn't want robots to follow him because it's more of a compliment to God if we're not required to follow him. So we all have free will. We can all choose good or evil every minute of every day. And when we choose good, it's basically like a compliment to God. Because we know that that's what he wants. And when we choose evil, he's sad. And he's upset with us, you know. There's like a modern teaching now in a lot of churches like, God isn't mad at you, he loves you just the way you are. <laughs> like, well, he might be upset with you. <laughs> God might be upset with you. But hopefully he's not. And that's why we all try to be good, you know, so that we're on God's good side. Obviously, you should want to be on God's good side. He's the ruler and creator of the entire world. You, The last being in the world that you want mad at you is God. You know, so be careful what you do. 
Be careful how you treat other people. Be careful how you live. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling, right? Anyways, what else can I say about fathers? I do feel like so many fathers have dropped the ball. There's a book that I heard about called Father Fatherless America that I always wanted to read, but it was about this epidemic in the last 20 or 30 years of so many kids growing up without a father, you know, single moms going it alone, which I think it's probably because of the excessive government aid, welfare, food stamps, unemployment, like those things can be good, but then the problem is the government replaces the man in the home. So then the woman doesn't really need the man because she's like, well, I got, I got welfare, I got food stamps, whatever. And then she's not like begging the man to come home because, you know, I mean, really, realistically, women only need men for money. So if women can get money from other sources, then they don't need the man. But the sad thing is then the kids are growing up without a dad, you know. Which I don't know. I don't know what the solution is for that. You know, obviously it's good for the government to help single mothers, but then, yeah, but then they don't beg the dad to come home. Which the dad should be home. The dad should be there for his kids. You know, kids need their father. There's a verse that says, "The glory of children is their fathers." That's interesting. And it's interesting that it's not the mother. The glory of children is their fathers. Just having a father. Having a father alive. Having a father that provides, that cares about them, that prays about them. That is a child's glory. So, ladies, keep that in mind before you try and scare off the father. I will say that I had that issue. And I don't know if this is like an instinct thing. But, like, I was observing my cat recently with her kittens. <laughs> and she would, like, she was the only, the sole caretaker for her kittens. And any other cat that came around, she would scare them off and run them away. So it was just her and her babies. So I think a little bit there's an instinct there that moms want to just be alone with their kids. So then maybe we're, moms are tempted to scare off the dad. Which, you would say, like, normally a dad would be working, like, a lot like, I don't know, 40 or 60 hours a week, you know. That's really what's supposed to be happening. When kids are young, the dad's supposed to be working tons and providing because the mom can't work because she can't put them in school until they're five, you know. So, anyways, that's really what should be happening. So, naturally, most dads are working their butts off, you know, they're not really around their kids as much until the kid turns five and maybe the mom goes to work when the kids go to school. But I don't know. It's really hard to say, honestly, how much should fathers be involved in the first five years of a kid's life? I don't know. I mean, the main role of a father is discipline, which kids don't really need discipline until probably around three or four. I worked in a lot of preschools, and it's really around three where kids need to be reined in and controlled and, you know, told no and trained, you know. Anyways, uh, more about how God is a good father. Just because your dad wasn't necessarily good, that doesn't mean that God isn't. Don't see God as being just like your dad, you know. There's some traits about your dad that are like God, like if he cared about you, God cares about you, but God isn't exactly like your father. So don't don't ever think that, you know. Your father was human. He was not perfect. God is perfect, you know. Anyways, I hope you all will heal from your possible father wounds that you have and forgive your dad for any way that he wasn't perfect. God bless you all. God bless. Bye.